Okay, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to another episode of Out of Eminence. I think now episode two, 14, inshallah. And today I have a guest, special guest uh, for today. My name is Abdul Rahim and uh, one of my brothers. And I would like Abdul Rahim to introduce yourself because today we're going to talk about some interesting today. So, Bismillah, Abdul Rahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I don't hear move back from the uh, camera a bit so we can see your whole face. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. Alhamdulillah. My name is Abdurrahim Abdul Qadir and I'm still a student. Where? Alhamdulillah. In Nigeria, I'm a student in Nigeria. My school, uh, Bell's University of Technology in Bokum State. And um, I'm in my final year, Ibn Allah. Yeah, alhamdulillah. <laughs> so, Abu Rahim, Abu, I met Abu Rahim through Majasa, actually. We're in the same uh, Majasa. So, through that, we connected, alhamdulillah. And uh, I just, Abu Rahim is just, it's interesting to me. I feel like uh, some of the conversation we have benefits me. Uh, we advise each other. I feel like just even through our conversation, other people can benefit. That's why I invited Abu Rahim to this podcast. But first, I want to, Abdul Rahim, I think today we're going to talk about Quran, the Quran and the love for the Quran. And uh, obviously, we're not saying we're uh, alim or student knowledge, but we want to share our own uh, uh, experiences and uh, our stories with the Quran. So I'm very interested in uh, Abdul Rahim's stories with the Quran, especially. But uh, Abdul Rahim, can you just tell us, like, let's, let's just start. What's your how how do you treat your Quran now? What's your relationship with the Quran now? Because I know you love it so much, and I want because you have such a con- or you have such contagious passion, contagious passion about the Quran. Yeah. So I want you to share it with us. Bismillah. Um, honestly, I can't uh, remember the time that when I started. Being connected to Quran, I think it was since I was a, a child. I just grew up and I've memorized some portion. I didn't know. Uh, I, I, have you memorized the whole Quran? Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. But since I was young, since I got that, I, I think when I started talking, I just knew that um, I've gone far with the Quran. Probably, I don't know when I started, but I've always been memorizing the Quran. Alhamdulillah. And, um, since I was a kid, my parents have uh, they've always put in extra effort with all the, ch- the children, the three of us, to always memorize the Quran. And after school, even when we were young, we used to go for madrasa after school. And uh, where I grew up in Nigeria, Otakos, we we don't have a lot of Muslims there. So the Muslims that uh, you can easily go to a mosque. And you know everyone in the mosque because of their few in numbers. So I mean, it was not it's, it's not like the other parts of Nigeria where you can um, easily find a lot of madar- madaris to learn Quran. But alhamdulillah, with that, we went far from where we were living. I remember we would go far places. Like different, like, 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 like a different state, like a different state, like a different state. No, but it was for kids. It was it was far. Okay. After school, when we finish school like at by two, we still go to the madrasa, start by four to six. So we don't go home. When we leave home from like eight up to like Madrid before we come back, and it was like that every day. Right? Alhamdulillah, up until I was um, about 15, 14, 14 years old, and I uh, went to Egypt to complete the memorization. Alhamdulillah. Did you go to, did you go to Naim in Egypt? Yeah, Naim. Yeah, I, I went to that. I went to that for the summer. Two months, alhamdulillah. I didn't, I don't think I, I met you there. I didn't meet you there. Now, nah. I went uh, 2014 and I finished um, 2015, I think April. Alhamdulillah, just April, around, around April that I finished. But after then, alhamdulillah, just I got the Muraja, Muraja. Wait, wait, how old were you when you went to Naim? 14. Hmm, there was, there was, do you know when I was there, they were talking about this Abdul Rahim, Rahim guy. I think so. They were talking about somebody that. Because Allah don't finish the Quran, yeah, yeah. But they were saying that not all of them, they're not proper hafiz. You know what I mean? Because a lot of people finish Quran, but they don't retain it. And they'll talk about one guy. Maybe it's you. 
<laughs> I think so. <laughs> okay. At Egypt. There's then option now to adopt the Moraja but um apart from learning the normal rewire of half an hour sleep, the rewire that everybody knows, alhamdulillah, I just I have good intentions to learn other rewires, alhamdulillah. Be, 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 before we go into the rewire, I, I, I want to get you to recite it because alhamdulillah, I just want everyone to, to Yeah, I want you to recite, I want you to recite the thing. I told you you're gonna to have to recite it. So <laughs> before before I forget, I want you to recite. No, I'm going to recite at the end. No, 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 no. <laughs> We're going to start now, don't worry. Hmm? What was what was that? Sotul. Sotul Fatih. Fatih. Is that one of your favorite surahs to say? No, not really, but I like it. Particular. The whole Quran is the whole Quran is beautiful. I don't really have favorite ayats, but the whole Quran is beautiful. But I read that place because the verse. ثم أوردنا الكتاب الذي نصطفينا من عبادنا فمنهم ظالم النفس. But Allah عز وجل said that among those that are false, Allah said He deliberately picks those that are going to memorize the book of Allah. سبحان الله. So whoever has memorized the book of Allah, it was because Allah chose the person to to become among the false. You cannot be able to memorize the Quran except Allah عز وجل makes you memorize it. No matter mm. how you try. But the thing is, when you try a lot and you can't get the Quran, it's not because uh, the Quran has a problem, it's because you yourself have a problem. The 
because the Quran is like a, a noble book and the book of Allah. So you don't expect Allah to give his book to just anybody. So when you try and you can't memorize the Quran, you have to check yourself. Probably you are you have a, a problem that you need to fix there, you need to fix by yourself before Allah will make it easy for you to memorize. But even in life, you try with sincerity, it's going to be difficult, but you have to repeat, repeat the ayah, repeat the ayah. Allah will make it easy for you, in the mm-hmm. So I read the verse, that Allah is the one that selects uh, those that memorize this book from among his servants. Then Allah says, that among the Hufas, among those people that memorize the book and preserve the book, not just memorize it, they retain it in their memory. It's very good in their memory. Allah said, some of them, ظالم لنفسه ومنهم مقتصد ومنهم سابق للخيرات That's among them, they are the worst part of them that they make the Quran, uh, they become ظالم, they do injustice with the Quran. How, 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 how do they do injustice? Sorry. After memorizing the Quran, you are going against the Quran. Hmm. When the Quran says you should do this, you are doing the opposite. But you have the Quran in your memory. So Allah says, Faminum Bali Those people they are going to uh, make the group they will be unjust with themselves by not following the Quran. And Allah said, Faminum Mokhtasuit, Faminum Sabi Kubir Shayat. That among them you will see them that they are in the middle path, that they are not uh, the best and they are not the worst. They are just in the middle. Then the last Allah said, uh, then the best of them, they are the ones that their deeds are the best, they are competing to achieve the best of deeds. Allah said, But to be among the best set of people, Allah said, that's the best of uh, of the fadl of Allah, that's the best you could be to, to make sure that the Quran is for you and not against you. But the beautiful thing about it is the next verse, Allah said, that among them the Lord, the Muqtasid, and the Sabiq of the Khayrat, those that are unjust with the Quran, but they retain the Quran, those that are in the middle part, and those that are best with the Quran, Allah says, all of them in Jannah. What? And in another riwayah, Allah says, Jannah Adidin Udu Khadunaha, that all of them they are going to be. Jannah, regardless of that, because uh, the scholars of Quran say that on the day of judgment, Allah is going to wipe away their sins because Allah, Allah is shy to punish the soul that his tongue always repeats the Quran. Mm. For him to retain the Quran, you always have to repeat it. There's nobody that you memorize and you leave it and you still retain it. That's not the way the Quran works. You have to keep retaining uh, the Quran by repeating. So this person is still repeating the Quran, is still reciting the Quran. Like they say, Inna Allah yastahi an yu'adduda qalban wa'al Quran. Allah is shy to punish a heart that has the Quran in him. So once you have the Quran, and you come on the day of judgment, and you recite the Quran, because once you have the Quran in your memory, from your grave, the Quran is going to start benefiting you. Unlike every other thing in this dunya, once you you die in this dunya, it's going to end in this dunya. But the Quran, once you die, that's when the Quran actually starts working for you. Yep. Now you are just reciting it so that it's going to work for you in your grave and mm-hmm. in the day. So when you repeat the Quran, it says uh, in your grave, the Quran will come to visit you. Mm. And the Quran is going to lighten up your grave. Mm. On the day of judgment, the Quran is going to come and intercede for you, like the Prophet said in the Hadith is Sahih. They call the Quran and they know who yet you are. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. That recite the Quran, that the Quran is going to come to intercede for the reciters on the day of judgment. So, those yeah. people, when they come and they can recite the Quran, they have the Quran in their memory. Allah is not going to punish them because the Quran is going to intercede for them. Yeah. And there's no way the Quran is going to intercede and Allah is still going to uh, not mm-hmm. accept the intercession. That, that's, that's actually beautiful. That is, that is beautiful. See, I've, I've, for example, a lot of the problems today 
Yeah, so from you know, but there are a lot of fitness going on, especially with youth. But I just want to clarify to everyone that Rahman is only you're only twenty one, isn't it? You're only twenty one. I know you may look like an old man like me because of beard. Was twenty one, same age as me. But I, what I want to say is like a lot of people. I feel like nowadays when we're maybe we're having a rough patch or the people are sinning. I think one way to actually bring you out that is to read the Quran. But a lot of people, a lot of people don't do that anymore. We we are neglect neglectful of the Quran. We don't we don't want to read it because some people they think, oh, what's the point when I'm uh, I'm doing this and doing that? I shouldn't touch the Quran. I shouldn't go near the Quran. What do you say? What do you have to say about that? How how would you encourage people to to read the Quran? There are a lot of benefits with reciting the Quran, numerous benefits in this dunya and in the next life. In the Akhirah, we have a lot of benefits. But sometimes I don't, um, I don't like telling people to <laughs> recite the Quran when they don't understand what they are reciting. Say it again. I don't like um, people reciting Quran when they don't understand what they are reciting. You don't, you don't like people reciting Quran if they don't understand. I don't like. I, say, I don't encourage people. To go on, you have a problem, you just go recite Quran and you don't know what Quran is telling you. Okay, 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 okay. okay. You just go to recite Quran, but you don't know what it's telling you. For instance, Quran says, That if you are in a gathering and someone is telling you to make way to sit, you should make way. That's what Allah is telling you. You read the verse, it's in Mujadila. But the next time you're in a gathering and someone says, you should make way. They are telling him go to the back, or you are being rude to him. Mm-hmm. But he just read the verse, or the Imam just read the verse in Salah. So you read Quran without understanding what Quran is saying. But you know, most people, most people don't understand. This. I'm sure you 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 start, you start Arabic, yeah. Most people, most people do not have the luxury of, to understand the Quran. Just that stop them to not read the Quran because they don't understand, or should that encourage them to? Hmm? They should put more emphasis on understanding what the Quran says. So, uh, for example, for, say they recite, they read the English immediately after. No, but Ibn Abbas, Ibn Abbas, Ibn Abbas was um, the, he was the cousin to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam yeah. and the, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam yeah, prayed so. for him that Allah should give him the understanding of the thing. And he was the best interpreter of the Quran. So a man came to Ibn Abbas one day and he told him that Ibn Abbas that I recite, I finish the Quran every day. He recited the whole of Quran from Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen to be up in Nas, full Quran every day. And Ibn Abbas told him that I prefer to recite Baqarah and, and Imran, Ali Imran in a day and understand what the verse is saying. Mm. Instead of reading the whole of it, he prefers to just read those two words. Uh, that's about 76 pages. He prefers to read it and understand what he's saying than reading the whole of Quran. Reading the whole of Quran has benefit because per ayah you get the reward, reward. But what's the point of reciting Quran when you don't apply any of it in your life? Mm. The Quran is um, supposed to change your life, not just recite it. If you recite a verse that Allah says, لا تأكل ربا تضعف مضعف like in Surah to Imran or Baqarah, Al-Ladina Akhuluna Riba. But you are dealing with interest. Every day, maybe your business is interest. But your best fast, Yayu Al-Ladina Mandata Akhuluna Riba. That's your body. Best fast. We don't apply it. But you don't know the meaning. Every time you leave your children in Salah, you say, Lata Akhuluna Riba. But you go to work, you're eating Riba. Yeah. It's like, you know, you know the eye of the Quran in which. The Allah Subhanahu wa Taala mentions the Quran that in the day of judgment, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is going to mention uh, that he says in the ayah, he said, I, I forgot what so it was, or he said, "Wa qala wa sulu ya Rabbi inna qawmi taqadu hada al-Quran mahjur." That the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is going to complain about us that we have abandoned the Quran, and some of the scholars they say that some of the ways we abandoned it, one we don't recite it, a lot of people don't recite it, two people maybe they recite it but they don't understand or apply the meaning. Three that maybe the people do they don't listen to Quran. So I feel like that eye is so relevant to us that we just abandon the Quran in the different ways we can. You know, uh, um, 
it's shocking how many women in this world are sort of for fun. Mm -hmm. Do you know why? In that page, I know it's one of the last one of the page, mm -hmm. Fuad is in, is in the page. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I go in that page. Mm -hmm. That's, in that page, you find um, Fuad. Your name is there, but it's you're supposed to know where your name is. <laughs> I think my name is in four places, like, I think four places in the Quran. That's one of them. But, like you said, if you recite the Quran and you don't understand the meaning of the Quran, I'm not 100% you have to keep reciting the Quran because even if you don't know the meaning, it has benefits to you just reciting the Quran. Like Allah said, yeah, you and Nancy thought you this are the judge of my wife or to me, okay? But she found him as his studio, but who then will have to be more than me? That who you mankind, mankind, Allah did not address the Muslims or the unbelievers. Allah said, mm. the whole of mankind, but the judge of my wife or to me, okay? That an advice from Allah has come to you. This advice is in the Quran. Never have you come, but she found him as his studio, and this Quran is going to. Uh, it's like a cure to your heart. It's going to heal your problems. What she found in the like the Quran is a cure to your heart. And it's going to guide those that are believers. So whether you understand the meaning or not, the Quran is going to benefit you. Like it's going to cure your heart. And Allah says, Who will be for the Allah or the Rahmat or the Dalik of Allah? That's because of the bounties of Allah, meaning the Quran is enough to make you happy. For the Dalik of Allah. Mm. Because of the Quran, you should be happy. So the Quran has benefits. The Quran is going to, uh, like Allah says, it's going to cure your heart's problems. So with, even you don't know the meaning, but I'm just put, putting emphasis on the meaning because most people, they read the, the Quran without understanding the meaning. And Allah, if you understand the meaning of Quran, you would know that the Quran is not cannot be word of anybody but Allah. There's nobody that can speak like this. Or there's nobody that has this much knowledge like this. I can, you not know you. I, can, I can feel that I can feel the passion. <laughs> I can feel the passion when you speak about it. So does that mean like you're in, you're encouraged, okay, you want to learn the Quran, learn Arabic so you can start to appreciate what you're reading. Is that what you're trying to say? Mm. You should learn Arabic. Learning Arabic alone does not explain the Quran. I understand, I understand. So, how, okay, how would, you, how would I get the explanation of Quran? I need to have a teacher who will teach me the recitation, the explanation of the Quran, or I can go online, or I can read the, uh, the meanings in English. Which one? Yeah. No, nope. Don't go online. Don't go online. If you have a teacher that you can meet, don't go online. Even if the teacher is far from you, you go meet the teacher, don't go online. Really? Far from me, yeah, don't go online. Why, why do, what do you have against online? What's your opinion? No, it's not just that. Uh, the way Quran came, anything Quran. <laughs> I know where you go with this. <laughs> the person that fights the Quran, the most eloquent person in the Quran is Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But even though he was the most eloquent, Allah gave him a teacher. Mm. The dream is to go down to teach him. He would recite to Jibril. When he makes a mistake, Allah, Jibril will correct him. But it's not like this. Like this. If Allah wanted, Allah would have descended the Quran in one night to the Prophet. What, what, I mean, what I mean by online is like, say they have an online teacher. Say you have an online teacher that you go to every day. Is that. I know it's, I know it's, it's never going to match the one on one, but nowadays, especially nowadays in the when we're doing the Western thing, that's that's the thing that most people go to, especially people older, like maybe our age, because a lot of people I don't know why they don't want to go to the the sheikh and learn under the feet, unless they're children or just students of knowledge. But for the lay person, the mundane, normal, quote unquote, normal Muslim. They will find alternatives online, which I'm not saying is good or bad. I'm not saying that's what people do. <laughs> hmm? But the best, like you said, is to learn from a teacher. For people that learn like that, you know, there's a um, the scholar they used to say 
لا يستطاع ان يعينه براحه الجسد. زين. That you need to gain knowledge if you don't stress yourself. If mm. you are wanting something easy, you just sit and you want it to come. They say you mm. never get gain knowledge. That knowledge would not come to you, you have to go with knowledge. Mm. Even knowledge is part, you have to go with knowledge. I'm not saying online is uh, I understand, I understand. Yeah. But if, even if it's just once a week that you can go and meet a teacher, it's better for you because a lot of times it's not just about learning the Quran from the teacher. There are a lot of things that you learn if you're in a circle of knowledge. Minus the Quran, minus the knowledge you are going to learn from your teacher. You could learn, um, you could learn manners, a lot of manners. If you are sitting with them, how to talk to your elders and how to how to behave when you're around with people that are older than you. So it's not just about I want to go learn Quran, you sit and once you learn you go. Mm. Most people when you learn, you wait when other things other people finish what they came to be the share for all of you go, except the share the, the share is giving information to go. But regardless, if you have a teacher that you can go with it's better you go and meet a teacher because there's Rahman, there is blessing there. The mm. teacher is it. When the teacher loves you, there's, there's supposed to be a bond of love between you and your teacher. Mm. Since I was young, I've had the um, mathematics teacher, English teacher. <laughs> <laughs> I never call them for months except my Quran teacher. And it's not because I don't want to call them, because I'm, I'm um, I, it's just because when I think they don't come to my head, I don't know why. Okay. So I just call my Quran teacher because when you go to them, they just this love that you just connect this bond that you love them more than anything because you, you can't understand when you're reading the Quran and you remember when you are reciting to your teacher that he taught me this place mm. and you recite the Quran that if you remember your teacher, you probably call it. Till this day, whenever I recite what you get here, sometimes I, I must remember the man that I had just here for me first. Whenever I recite Surat al I will remember. Surat al Mumtahina. When I recite Surat al Mumtahina, sometimes I remember because when I was memorizing Mumtahina, I was very lazy. Like, I was about 11 or 10. I was 10 years of memorizing Mumtahina. But then I was like in the senior class. I was in the senior class. I was not with my. my it is. So I was like. Um, Baby of the class, and I was not memorizing well. Then my teacher flogged me that day. <laughs> so See, I, nowadays you can't flog. <laughs> till today, Mustahna stays in my head. <laughs> so when I said Mustahna, I remember that this man that day did something to you. So Mustahna stays in my head. So sometimes it's not just about um, the Quran that you are going to learn. You learn, like I said, I was with my, I was with people that are older than me in the class. So I was not just playing about like maybe because if I had my mates with me, it would probably yeah, just be something. Yeah, I get you. But when you are with people that are, mostly you find mature people in gatherings that are going to learn, you would not find somebody that's going there to play or something. So oh. that's how you get benefits from uh, being uh, in the circle of knowledge about outside what you went there to study or what you went there to learn. Okay. So it was better you go to meet someone that will take you to teach you to impact you. Like, like what I was saying, Allah would have given the Professor Ali Wa Rasulullah straight why. Like Hadith will put the way it is to come. And when he's in sleep or he just come in dream or something like that. For Allah is sent in the truth because Allah said, Man is a khmin ayat in our musiha, not to be khair in our musiha. Whenever you, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you get an ayah, Allah is going to bring another ayah to you. This is what Allah is going to remind you. Same is not with Yaman. Allah said, uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he came to me, was teaching him. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was mm-hmm. reciting fast. Then yeah. Allah now recited, وَإِذَا قَرَأْنَا تَبِعَ الْقُرْآنَ ثُمَّ إِنَّ عَلَيْنَا بَيَانَ Because Allah told the Prophet that you recite one after the other when he gets with him, the way recites to him. So you should have a teacher, not mm-hmm. just if you don't have any option, then maybe you go to online, but mm. don't stay with the Quran because the Quran, the Quran will not stay with you if you are lazy with it. 
the Quran must take it to you. Yeah, it's, it's Quran is. I remember you told me a phrase. You told me a phrase. How did you say that phrase about the the, the Quran is like a attractive girl or something? You're know saying. <laughs> doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. <laughs> I understand, I understand. Like I was a young, I'm still a young boy. They said everybody wants to marry that young girl. Like everybody simultaneously wants the Quran, not just you. Mm. Same way, everybody wants that beautiful girl in them. And you just go to the girl only in the morning. But we have some other people that are going to the girl morning, afternoon, and evening. So we have some people that you just read the Quran once in the morning. But we have people that are reading the Quran. Morning, afternoon, and evening. Mm. So, who is the Quran going to pick out of those people to stay mm. with? The one, that, the one that comes more. Just because you're giving the Quran more attention. Mm. So, the more attention you give the Quran, the more attention the Quran is going to be given. Uh -huh. And that's why this um, Imam Shati was the one that wrote this book um, about them. Um, the name of the book is Hibs al It's about the riwayat of the Quran, seven riwayat, seven kiraat is there. So he said you should treat the Quran like your food and your water. So once you don't eat or you don't drink water, you are going to die. Mm. So if you don't recite Quran often, you should feel like you are going to die. Mm. So you have to treat the Quran like that if you want the Quran to stay with you. Mm. And Quran is it will look small if you keep reciting it every time. It looks small. But the moment you don't recite Quran, the Quran will look like very big from Bakara, Imran, Nisa, Mai. You look at it so much. But if you have everything in your memory and you can stay and just one hour you revise Bakara to half of Imran, you will know the Quran is quite short. Even you don't need to revise, you can just stay in your brain and examine the Quran and just wipe up. It is like this, and you know Quran is very small. But the moment you start staying away from Quran, that's why you look at Quran is difficult to memorize. That's why Allah says, "When Allah is the Quran and you take it, you have to take it." We have made this Quran easy. Okay. We the Quran. So, who among you wants to retain the Quran? Same way, Allah is the Surah That it is Allah that sent down this book. And Allah is definitely going to perfect it. Huh. So, and subhanAllah, subhanAllah. I feel like, okay, now in relation to your thing about the analogy you use of how we have to spend more time with the Quran, can you tell us your relationship, your relationship with Quran, how, you, how much time do you spend? I'm, I'm addicted. Like yeah, you're addicted to the Quran. Hmm? No, that's good, that's good. That's good, excellent. I want to ask you about uh, your time. You, I know, I know recently you took a break from, let's just say you took a break from the dunya <laughs> and you went to Ghana and learn uh, Quran in a remote part. I think you're from Portugal, you went to Sokoto, made northern Nigeria to memorize Quran. And you tell me, so yeah, I really enjoyed that. I hope, I would like you to share with, with some people. So you went to Sokoto. Why did you go to Sokoto? Sokoto is a place in Nigeria, everybody who doesn't know. You know, Allah, I think Allah has really blessed West uh, Africa with Quran. Allah has blessed the Western part of Africa with Quran. You find people that uh, they dedicate their whole life from morning till night, apart from Salah. Quran, that's what they do. Quran, from morning till night, that's their whole life. But I think Sokoto is like a, it's the farthest place from Quran. That you can go in Nigeria. So it's like deep, where, deep to north, like? Yeah, it's north. North. Up north. But Potakot is south, south. Okay. So, like the farthest. But um, Sokoto is um, where Islam started in Nigeria. Hmm. Usman Nafudu. Nigeria. Usman Nafudu, yeah? Is, huh? Usman Nafudu. 
started from secondary years as my okay. oldest second. That's my last name, you know that. <laughs> <laughs> we moved to Kano, but then um, the Sultan, the Sultan of Nigeria, the Muslims in Nigeria, mm -hmm. was this is so cool. So I um, I wanted to go to like a, an Islamic society that everything was about the Muslim and I just wanted to Miss yourself. The normal way I was like going to then I was um, I was with one company, I was working, I was doing like a, you guys call it placement. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so I was with that with the company. But I stopped. Then I went to Sokoto. Alhamdulillah. But apart from the Quran, I just want to say this that what amazed me the most about my time so good, apart from Quran, was that when I got there, like I didn't tell you this before, I don't know if I did, but when I got there, um, I went to, after like the first day, the second day, I wanted to like get a place that I was going to stay for the time I was going to be there. So um, the place, it was really cheap, it was really cheap. Yeah. So when I got the place, it was just like a room, a room, just like a single room. And then I was going to buy everything I needed to stay in the place, but everything I needed for the short time. Then I went to the market. That's the second day I went to the market to get all what I wanted. And when I was in the market, I just bought things I needed and I go back to the room. Then I was just, because <laughs> I was alone and I had time to think and I was like, I could not believe that I was yeah. Going there, like I'm actually in that place because I just hear of it. I can just hear that there's a place also to go. I cannot imagine myself being there. I could not even tell my friends that I was going there because they would not believe that I'm. I'm <laughs> so when I was there, I was just thinking one day and I was looking at where I was staying. And all what I had there, I now remember that when I was at the market to get all what I wanted, I only bought very few things, just like a bed, a fan. Just very, I can't remember. Yeah. That. But my dad and family in Potapo, they all wanted me to get like a, like a, a, a pot plates, pots that can be cooking and all. But I didn't want to get all those because I was thinking that. I'm That's not why you came here. Yeah, I'm just here for a short time. And I now remember they had this very personal lesson. So, so, so. If you give it, it's all like a traveler. Mm. So you don't really have to. See everything beautiful and go get it. Just live simple like the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Just okay. live like a traveler. So I just remember that when I was at the market, I didn't buy everything I needed. I buy everything I wanted. I just go like all what I needed for the short time. If I saw that there was a cheaper replacement that was getting it. So like now, even though I've left the, my bed, my fan, everything, I just left it there because I don't know anybody to leave it for anything. Mm -hmm. So I just left it there. So if I bought a lot of things like this, so it is hot, like really hot, you, you can't imagine it is. It, so I didn't even get easy, I just got a fan. And there was not like, you know, light there sometimes, mosquito and stuff like that. So I didn't really get fancy stuff and just to enjoy myself there. I just went there for a short time and I, I just bought a few things. Then since after that time, I had that. Been able to program myself that I should not always buy everything that because I can pay for it, I just pay for it. Mm. I should just buy something that's going to be important to me and yeah, not leave that at home. But about the Quran in Sokoto, uh, it was more like this rural type of learning that you go to meet the teacher one on one and you recite to the teacher. But Alhamdulillah, the teacher I went to meet was. Uh, He's not a young man, so he, he's old, but then he is. Um, he doesn't recite to the student, you only go to recite to him. You go to recite to him because you want to collect the jaza. That's mm -hmm. like a snatch of Quran, like a chain of transmission of yeah. Quran, like from Professor Lali mm -hmm. to Ali bin Abdul Wadi or Abdullah bin Masoud. It has chain, so it comes down to you. Then you see your name in the snad. Then if is it like a written the snad or something? Huh? Do you know I heard that there's a chain of the jazz and the snad. But like, do they have a, like actual list? List. Yeah. 
Yeah, you see, you see it. Like if you see Ijaza, you see, like let me see, if I have Ijaza from my shape, you will see my name will be there, Abdurrahim. You will see my teacher name before. Um, Qara, you will see my teacher, my teacher name in several ways. Shaykh uh, Muhammad Abdullah Sani. So you see Abdullah Sani, Muhammad, Qara, Ila, Abdurrahim, like Abu Ismail. You see it going down. And so his teacher name. Okay. His teacher. That's the dated back to the Prophet. So you see the Prophet's name there? Yeah, you see the Prophet. I need to see an example of one. <laughs> like a book. Like a book. It's not just a thing. Would you give every, the people the book? Do you get the book? But if you finish reciting the full Quran to the Shaykh, and he gives you the Ijazah. The Ijazah, I'll tell you something beautiful about the Ijazah that's going to happen on the Day of Judgment. I'll tell you something beautiful about it. So you go to meet him to collect Ijazah. And Alhamdulillah, the person I went to meet is the, is the chief judge of Quran competition in Nigeria. So his Ijazah is strong. If you collect Ijazah from him, he shows your his is strong. And you don't make a lot of mistakes in your Quran. So I wanted to collect Ijazah from me because from house I was not able to finish. I read one third of Quran. So when we recite to the Sheikh, the next person recites. Everybody is just there reciting to the Sheikh. The Sheikh is not reciting to you. So the Sheikh is not teaching people that have not memorized. If you have not memorized Quran, you can go to the Sheikh. Mm. You go with his teacher to teach you. So when you finish memorizing, you can now go study to the Sheikh to collect Ijazah. So people that are going to meet to the Sheikh, they are, they are Sheikh on their own because they are, they are already teachers and they have a lot of students that they themselves have given Ijazah. But not just anybody can give Ijazah. Like now you find a lot of people they give Ijazah, but the Ijazah is mostly on Ijazah again because there are some breaking down in translation. Mm. Or for instance, let me say, me, if I finish, if I collect Ijazah from the Sheikh, 